Earlier I had published a video showing how you can manage WordPress files using FTP or SFTP. In the comment section of that video I got this question from one of the viewers. The whole question was a bit long but the point was this. Where do WordPress stores posts and pages? Is it in the WordPress installation directory or somewhere else? In fact this is a question most of us have in the beginning. And it's a good question. So that's what we are going to address in this video. Where does WordPress store posts and pages? To demonstrate that to you, let me create a new page. Go to the pages section. And there you can see that currently we have two pages, a privacy policy page and a sample page. Click add new to create a new page. Then enter a title. Let it be an about page, about me and then enter some sample text. I am Abhinav. I create websites using WordPress. Ok. On the right side under page settings, we can set a URL slug for our new page. Let it be about me. Then click publish. Now we can view the page in a new tab and our new page is available at the address domain slash about me. You can also see the title and the content we entered. But where is it stored? If it was a static site, you might expect a new file by the name aboutme.php or aboutme.html. But that's not the case. If we go to the file manager and check the WordPress folder, we cannot find a file by the name about me anywhere. You might expect it to be inside the WP content or the uploads folder. But it's not there either. So the key point here is that WordPress is not a static website. It's a dynamic website that makes use of a database. Then where is the database? Obviously it's not in the WordPress directory. If you had watched my previous video on how to install WordPress, then you know where it is. If you are using a cPanel web hosting provider, then go to the database section. There you can find a page called PHP My Admin. Open it. So PHP My Admin gives us a user interface to interact with databases. And here is a database connected with this website. And it has 12 tables. This is a MySQL database and it stores data in the form of rows and columns within multiple tables. Out of these 12 tables, posts and pages are stored in the WP Posts table. We can already see the page we created. If you look at the post title, you can see that there are two about me pages. But if you look at the post status, one is inherit and the other is publish. That's just a WordPress mechanism to store the different versions of a post. Don't bother about that for now. We are concerned about the published post. The post content contains the post body and the post title contains the title of the post. Likewise, the post name column is where WordPress stores the post slug. So if we edit an existing post, then the change must be visible in the database, right? So let me go back to the editor and then add a new line. I also create PHP websites. Ok, now update the post. Go back to PHP My Admin, refresh the page. Open the post content field and we can see the new line. I hope now you are starting to get an idea about how WordPress stores post data. Conversely, if we make an edit directly in the database field, then that change should be visible back in the post editor. So here I have added one more paragraph right inside PHP My Admin. One row affected. Now go back to the WordPress editor, refresh it and we can see the new line. Here is some more text. That's what I added in the PHP My Admin column. Now another question that might come to your mind is where is this database stored on the server? Or where is MySQL storage location? 
As I already said, PHP MyAdmin is just an interface to interact with databases. So the name of our database is this, which is a MySQL database. There can be multiple MySQL databases on a server, but WordPress needs only one. On Linux servers, the location is usually inside libMySQL. That's why you cannot find it using File Manager. Shared hosting plans don't even give access to this folder. However, if you are on a VPS or a dedicated server, you can find it. Here I am going to connect to one of my VPS servers hosted with DigitalOcean. Here I am using FileZilla to view the files. I have already saved the connection details. So let me just click connect. And now I am connected to the server. On the right side you can see that currently I am inside the root directory. From there go to the var slash lib slash mysql directory. That's where all the mysql databases are stored. And here is my WordPress database. I named it as WordPress itself. Open that and you can see the files representing each table in the database such as WP posts, options, etc. It's the same table structure we saw in PHP MyAdmin. Go to structure to view the database structure. These are the table names. Likewise, these are the tables inside the MySQL directory. The file extension is IBD. That's because we are using the InnoDB engine. However, you don't need to manipulate these files directly. Doing so can even corrupt the database. So if you want to take a database backup, then what you can do is to use the export feature inside PHP MyAdmin. Else if you are using the command line on a VPS or a dedicated server, then you can run the MySQL dump command. Go to the export tab, then select format as SQL and then click go. This allows you to download a file in the format .sql, save it and you get all the data inside a .sql file. Here is the downloaded SQL file which is actually a text file that you can read using any text editor. Let me open it in the default text editor. This is how it looks. Later if you want to restore the site from this file you can use the import functionality inside PHP MyAdmin. Otherwise, there are also several plugins that allow you to restore a WordPress database from an SQL file. Hope this video could answer most of the questions. Thanks for watching.